are going to talk about the the top 10 games that I'm excited for coming out in March. Uh, obviously, we're already into March, and today there are some titles that are releasing. Uh, I've also had the chance to take a look at one of these titles that I'm excited for, so I'm cheating a little bit, but I already have an idea that I am very excited about this, uh, but I can't say more than that. Uh, number 10 for me is the redo of Devil May Cry in the uh, Devil May Cry HD collection. We had one of our viewers talking about that. It comes out uh, on uh, the PlayStation 4 and uh, PC and Xbox One on March 13th. Now, this, I think, has been redone before for the PS3, if I'm not mistaken, and maybe the Xbox 360. It's Devil May Cry 1, 2, and the uh, special enhanced edition of Devil May Cry 3. Um, this is uh, Hideki uh, Kamiya. Uh, I think I got the name right, uh, the Bayonetta genius. And uh, I played Bayonetta, and I actually played a little bit of the um, Okami. Um, there's an HD port of that for the PlayStation 4, which was also a Kamiya game. And I'm, I'm just jonesing. I, I want to go back. I want to re-experience this. Hopefully, they do some extra flourishes so it, it makes it even more of a special treat to play it in uh, on modern systems. But obviously, everything is... Uh, up resed up to 4K resolution. Hopefully the textures don't suffer too much from it. Excited about that. Number nine is, um, and I'll just pop this up here one second. Uh, number nine is the Kirby Star Allies game, which is coming out uh, uh, on uh, March 16th for the Switch. This is the first Switch version of Kirby. And the big deal here is that you can play competitively, or uh, cooperatively, I guess a little competitively, uh, with up to four players at the same time. And you can, you know, join up on uh, powers and abilities and do cool things like become a train uh, or jump onto a, a star and fly around. Um, and uh, it looks like it's going to be super fun. And uh, I'm excited about that. Number eight is Golem, which is um, a VR game from Highwire Games for the PlayStation VR. It's uh, an exclusive. Now, I interviewed uh, Marty O'Donnell, who is the composer famous for Halo and worked on... Uh, on uh, Destiny before he was uh, let go, or there was some some big uh, turmoil at Bungie, and he left the studio. Um, but he has moved on to Highwire, and they've been working exclusively on this for a number of years now. And I've, I, I, one thing I didn't say about Moss is how excited I am for more great VR standalone experiences, exclusives, and uh, you know games that have been uh, had some money injected into them. And I feel like this could be one of those games. There isn't a lot of hype right now, and I think it's got to do more with install base than anything. It's like, you know, sort of leveraged bets. Uh, but great um, pedigree at Highwire behind this. So I'm excited to see what this is. You're taking control of these big giant stone uh, sort of mechs in a way. And, uh, you know, so it's going to be interesting to see how the mechanics all work. It, this has been a long time of development, and so much has changed in VR, so I'm excited to see how Golem um, has come together, and we will find out uh, PlayStation VR exclusive March 13th, so very soon. Um, I'll try to stream that one when I get, when I get a code for it. Uh, number seven is a bit weird for me, because I don't play these games all that often, but... Um, uh, I think Elon Musk has got me very interested in the idea of uh, uh, not personally relocating to Mars, but the idea of surviving on Mars uh, is absolutely fascinating. And uh, with all of the stuff that uh, we seem to continue to be doing to this planet, um, it seems timely and pertinent to be thinking about this. Paradox is bringing out this game called Surviving Mars, and uh, you have uh, you know robots helping you to create a city, and it's sort of like a Sim City uh, simulation, uh, trying to actually build up all the systems that will help you survive. You know the uh, um, the, the domes that will give you an atmosphere and the uh, the power grid to sort of outfit your city, and then you want to populate it, and you're going to have the hydroponic kind of towers and things like that, so you can grow things in here. Uh, of course, you're going to have all of this sci-fi technology, and it looks pretty fun. It looks cool, and the interesting thing about this, it comes out on um, uh, March 15th, and it's on PC, PS4, and Xbox One, 
And uh, I'm psyched to play this. And what they hint about in the uh, trailer is that everybody's going to be safe. There's really no dangers on Mars. And then it ends with this huge uh, meteorite coming in or this, this giant thing to cra crash everybody's dreams. Uh, number uh, six for me is Valkyria Chronicles, Chronicles 4, um, which I think initially is coming to the PlayStation 4. I couldn't find just like a straight up. Uh, trailer for this. So this is like the development team working on this. I've played some uh, Valkyria Chronicles games before, I think on the PlayStation 3, possibly the Vita. I've always liked this uh, series. It's a uh, uh, like almost like a hand-painted or etched game. Um, with uh, It's a cross between sort of third-person action and some really cool strategy. And uh, it's a, it's just a cool franchise, and it's a unique idea. It's like alternate history, um, and you've got to command troops and go into battle and try to figure out, uh, how, you know, how to flank enemies and work around them, and you control these kind of steampunk vehicles and stuff like that. It looks pretty cool. It looks like it's going to be uh, um, a lot of fun, and obviously this is the first one coming out for modern systems. I think this is coming to everything, too. I think it's coming to the uh, Xbox One and PC and uh uh, the Switch as well. But initially, I think it launches on uh, PlayStation 4 on March 21st. I don't know anything about the story. I don't know about these new characters. Um, I believe there was some kind of a mix-up as well. We didn't get uh, Valkyria Chronicles 3 in uh, North America, or at least I don't remember playing it. So it's like we went to 1, 2, and 4. Uh, but it's a cool franchise, and uh, I love Sega. I, I, I'm playing Yakuza 6 right now, and I can't, I can't tell you how much I love Sega. I guess that's going to be on my list of, uh, uh, of games that I'm psyched for in uh, March as well. Um, uh, all right, let's go to uh, uh, number five, which is MLB The Show uh, 18. And, you know, a lot to be able to predict with this franchise. Uh, but the thing that I always find, it's, it is like the beginning of spring um, when I play this game. It's like, oh, okay, yeah, the sun's finally coming out. And we've had a miserable winter with lots and lots and lots of rain and super cold days. And we got snow in Vancouver. And when you play a sunny game like the MLB show games, which are always made with such, you know, a beautiful attention to detail, it looks sensational and I always have a good time with these games there is this you know um, incremental kind of addition that happens every year and that's that's what happens when you're on a nine-month development schedule uh, but there you know the Sony San Diego team has been killing it with this franchise on the PS4 and I have no reason to doubt uh, that this is going to look sensational it's also going to be their second kick at it on the uh, PS4 Pro so we should see some pretty cool um, uh, 4K uh, art and some, you know, some extra beauty out of this franchise. Psyched for that. Uh, number four is a uh, cooperative action adventure game that EA picked up the rights for. Famously, the uh, developer made some noise at uh, the Game Awards last year. Uh, it's called A Way Out, and you basically are trying to uh, break out of prison um, with you and a buddy, and I think it's uh, AI controlled if you can't find somebody, but you can play cooperatively on the couch, or you can play uh, online as well. Um, looks like almost Uncharted-like, or Uncharted Light, uh, in terms of characterization and some of the mechanics. Um, looks like there's a cool story here. And I like the passion of the developer. He got on my, uh, my nerves a bit by how much he was pushing his points uh, with Jeff when he was up on stage at the uh, awards. Uh, but it's hard to deny the uh, enthusiasm uh, and, and the belief in his game. He basically promised, look, he, he promises us that if we get this game, we're going to have a great time with it. And it looks like they're using a lot of the, uh, the uh, brothers... Uh, mechanics of being able to employ, um, you know, the, the cooperative balance back and forth uh, to be able to do a lot of things together, which looks great. And they've got some interesting split screen dynamics in here as well. I am psyched for this game. It's called The Way Out. comes out on uh, uh, March 23rd for PS4, Xbox One, and PC. Number three, uh, I bet you can kind of predict this one. It's from Bandai Namco. It's an RPG uh, that we've been waiting for for a long time, um, sort of evoking the, uh, the art of uh, the uh, Miyazaki movies. It's Nino Kune uh, Kuni 2. 
Um, I played a little bit of Nino Kuni 1. I, that was a game that um, Ben Silverman and Jose Sanchez reviewed for us. And as you know, uh, you know, the, the freight train never stops. So I, I didn't really have a lot of time to go back to it. But what I did play, I was like, wow, I was, I was absolutely astounded by the art of it and the, uh, the beauty of it and the, um, I don't know, the peacefulness, you know. And I know that they've changed a lot of things up because it was a little meandering the first game. This one has tighter um, action mechanics. I played a little bit of this at E3 last year, loved it. It was really hard to put down, and it just looks great. It looks like an animation in, uh, you know, an animated movie in motion. Since this game, though, um, was announced and has come out, though, we've played uh, Breath of the Wild, which really has crafted almost a Miyazaki kind of vibe as well unto itself. Um, but new characters, new story, new engine, new fighting mechanics, new machines, uh, and, and I believe it's uh, PC, PS4. Yeah, I don't think it's coming to the Xbox One. Um, so it's uh, it's a nice pickup for Sony right there. That comes out March 23rd as well. March 23rd is a big busy day. Um, I've got uh, Sea of Thieves, for those of you wondering if there are going to be any Xbox One exclusives coming out in March. This is my number two, uh, Xbox One and PC. Uh, I played the beta with Ben and Jose, and we were killing ourselves laughing. We also found this guy that had been like he was the master of the beta, and he took us everywhere. And uh, it, was, it was great to play with somebody that really knew all the sort of guidelines and knew where to take us. Um, but it's really fun and it's very cooperative. You really can't do much in this game unless you um, partner up with people and, and do things together. But uh, it's all the pirate tropes, you know, the chanties and the, uh, the walk the planks and the steering the ships and the cannon fire and uh, uh, sunken treasure. Um, but it's beautiful. And it, it was astoundingly beautiful. None of the trailers, none of the demos that I've seen prepared me for sitting down, watching this on my uh, OLED TV, running on the Xbox One X. I was floored. It's a gorgeous game. Does it have the longevity and the staying power? Well, it, you know, I think this is being built to keep us in their world because every game is now forever. Uh, we'll see. We'll find out. But I am absolutely psyched. It's number two on my list. And I uh, I think you can probably guess it's what's number one. And I mistakenly forgot uh, Yakuza 6, and I really should have put that in my list as well. If I think if I was going to put, I'd probably put Yakuza 6 uh, mm, uh, number four, actually, before uh, A Way Out. But I forgot it because I'm actually playing Yakuza 6 right now. But uh, the, the game that I'm super psyched about is Far Cry 5. We've gotten a taste. Uh, at first, I found it offensive and too, uh, you know, close to home literally and figuratively. Um, but now I see the genius in it, and I, I've never sort of not seen the, uh, the production pedigree and the artistry and the, uh, the gameplay mechanics sort of caliber uh, that we're going to get out of this game. And uh, I, I, it was very difficult in my hands-on to stop playing. It was like I wanted to just tell the people that were running that to just to shut up. I'm not stopping. I want to keep playing. Who cares if somebody needs the controller? I wanted to just stay. Uh, and of course, I couldn't. I had to put it down. Um, lots and lots of different mechanics, you know, AI companions, there's cooperative play, there's the Far Cry Arcade, which we talked about today, uh, flying, of course, lots of gun play, animals, <laughs> you know, um, it's, it's a sandbox and it's going to be crazy, ridiculous fun and it's going to consume every shooter fan's life for uh, a big chunk of the spring. Far Cry 5 comes out on March 27th. And there are the top 10 and 11, if you count Yakuza 6, games that I am super psyched for March. We're going to have a good month, guys.